We have seen that the derivative of a function can be used to approximate the function by a much simpler linear function, that is a polynomial of degree 1, and we've also seen that knowing the second derivative of the function, when it exists, gives us more information about the shape of the graph of the function. So you might be wondering, if we know that all derivatives of a function, provided that they exist to every order, can we then approximate the function with polynomials of increasing degree? The answer is, well, if the function is nice enough, then yes. Let me show you a nice function, the sine function, and what you will see next is polynomials approximating the sine function to higher and higher precision. So first we start with a polynomial of degree 1, then of degree 3, then of degree 5, then of degree 7, then of degree 9, and you can imagine this process continuing. We have powers of x uh, added with certain coefficients, and you see that the resulting graph of this polynomial fits very nicely the graph of the sine function. So we will return to this. The nice enough functions that I uh, was referring to are functions for which a power series expansion exists. So we say that a function has a power series expansion at the point A if there is a positive number r such that if the distance between x and a is less than r then f of x can be written as this infinite power series in x with the coefficients c sub n given by the nth derivative of the function evaluated at a divided by n factorial. Now this is called the Taylor series of f at a and um, we can write it in this sum notation as well. And let me now play the movie again for the sine function. This is what the first few terms added up in the Taylor series of the sine function look like. There, there are lots of uh, famous uh, Taylor series or Taylor series of famous functions. There is a special case when a is equal to zero. We refer to the Taylor series as the Maclaurin series. And let me now list some famous uh, important Maclaurin series for the exponential function, the sine function, the cosine function. For all three of these functions, this uh, number r can be as large as you want it, and for every x, this, these expansions hold true. Whereas for 1 over 1 minus x and the natural logarithm of 1 plus x, these expansions only hold true for x between negative 1 and 1. Okay, this is enough for now. Let's answer some questions. Use the Taylor series expansion of the function f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x to find the derivative, that is the fifth derivative of this function, evaluated at 0. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have inputted 120 or 5 factorial. So to use the Taylor series expansion, we just need to use the fact that, that 1 over 1 minus x, when x is between negative 1 and 1, can be written as 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the 4 plus x to the 5 and so on. But at the same time, the Taylor series expansion tells us that the coefficients in the expansion are the nth derivatives evaluated at, in this case, 0 divided by n factorial. So if we look at the coefficient of x to the 5, here we see that it is equal to 1. So we see that c5 is equal to 1, but at the same time, this is the fifth derivative of the function evaluated at 0 divided by 5 factorial. So from this, multiplying both sides by 5 factorial, we get that the fifth derivative of the function evaluated at 0 must be 5 factorial or 120. Let's look at the next question. Use the Taylor series expansion of f of x equals the cosine of x to find the limit, the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus the cosine of x all divided by x. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. I hope you paused it and have found the limit to be 0 using the Taylor series expansion 
the cosine of x. So you can write this limit, 1 minus the cosine of x over x as x approaches 0, by simply substituting for the cosine of x its Taylor series at 0 or Maclaurin series to get 1 minus 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial and so on. This is all divided by um, x. So when we expand the brackets, um, the ones cancel and we will be left with x squared over 2 factorial minus x to the 4 over 4 factorial plus x to the 6 over 6 factorial and so on. And this is all divided by x. So if we divide each term by x to cancel the x's, there will still be x's left, multiples um, factors of x left in each term. So what we are left with is x times 1 over 2 factorial minus x squared over 4 factorial plus x to the 6, x to the 4 uh, over 6 factorial and so on. This uh, infinite series as x approaches 0 uh, um, has the limit that is 1 over 2 factorial whereas the limit of x as x approaches 0 is 0 therefore the answer the limit is 0 times 1 over 2 factorial or 0. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.